here we are back to testing the portable devices in stationary the game you buy when you played too much space engineers okay I thought it was funny anyways so we have two test setups here we're gonna close the doors uh, they're the exact same size they have almost the exact same setup inside uh, there's just a little bit of piping difference because of how the uh, um, how the units were facing. Um, but the major difference here is the uh, valves on either side. So if we go to this one here on the right, we have two expansion valves going down into the radiator system here. Now, because these, I think these valves are fractional, that means pressure on this side should be um, closer to the pressure on this side let's let me think about what I'm saying here that that's correct so this pressure and this pressure should be a smaller differential now we're gonna go to this side oh by the way I backed my robot form we have them in line so the pressure on this side should be higher than this side because it has to move to over here and then move to over here and then spit it out over here and then inside for right now I have two scrubbers. Scrubber on this side, scrubber on this side. There you go. And they are delivering just as much air as they can push. Under here, if I can get under here, we have the radiator systems, which is just basically two uh, sets of pipes uh, that just go around the outside of the, of the base, rejecting heat when it's uh, hotter on the inside and absorbing it if it's colder. Uh, just standard stuff. Now technically in the real world this side should be a little bit cooler because more pressure will be in this pipe and because there's more pressure in this pipe you have a higher energy potential and because you're driving off the thermal energy uh, that means when it expands over there to the lower pressure pipe there should be a lower temperature potential in the pipe but that's not what we're going to have uh, we'll go to the atmospheric sensor here here and we'll see that it is 8.22 8.23 kilopascals and this one is 64 so That's a big uh, temperature difference, uh, pressure difference. So this is, Jesus, it's uh, like over 10 times the pressure in this one, in the inline, um, uh, in the inline pipe, inline valves. It's uh, over 10 times the pressure difference. So I guess the fractional amount, maybe one to 10, that if you have a pressure difference uh, like say one side of the pipe is zero and one side of the pipe is one megapascal it'll move 100 kilopascals per tick maybe I don't know I have to test that out if I really want to really care but we can already see that it's um, causing a difference the cell on the left is at a higher temperature and on the cell right is is not a huge difference but oh actually it's, it's about 10 degrees so this test over here with the inline is absorbing slightly more heat than the other side I think if we work it out it's probably going to be close to 10 percent future me breaking in here to give a better explanation and the thing is that there is no better explanation the game uses very simple equations to work out what the temperature of a, of a system is. So when you take one system and add it to another system, they're just adding it together. Where in the real world, very complex things happen. When you compress a gas, you are greatly reducing its volume. You're also accelerating molecules through the piston action. That doesn't add very much, but 
it, it still adds um, a percentage to the uh, energy. But what you're doing is you're increasing um, the thermal energy per cubic centimeter, but not um, per mole. That may be explained poorly, but it's the best that I can do without um, babbling on for a very long time. Now, let's reset the temperatures back down. Replace the air conditioners. Wait for the temperature to go down. Uh, we're pretty close to even right now. We're only about 10 degrees apart, which won't be a super big deal. So, oops. Now we just set up our ACs in here, like so. And now this should turn them both on at the same time. Now, even though we're not really trying to be super accurate here. Oh, it's already cooling. See, that's on. And that's on. Now we go back over here. And uh, they're still going down, but they're going to struggle during the daytime. Because, well... Um, they'll be subject to thermal forcing, or solar forcing, because of the star. But we're only seven degrees apart, it looks like it. So we'll just um, note in our minds here that the left is slightly higher than the right, and then take that into account um, when we're done the testing. And let's just let it go. I wonder if I'm close enough to those transformers here that I can put a battery in myself and then be able to stand here without having to change my battery over at some point. Okay, there we go. That's good. Now, let's see what this looks like in however long I decide to go do whatever I'm going to do while waiting for this to finish. So this is a little bit of an interesting result here. The gap is widened slightly to about 10 degrees from beginning at 7 degrees. And it's because I forgot that these uh, ACs here, these portable ACs, will output a set amount of pressure into the uh, waste pipe. So the waste pipe is the same 12.2 kilopascals. Uh, this one's 11. Um, it's still almost 10% off, so that should be... Hmm. Heat is 178 on this side. 174. That's interesting. This one is staying in slightly longer because of the, the double... Um, uh, the double valve. So that's why the pressure, or the, temp the thermal energy has gone down a bit. Whereas this one, it stays in the pipe a little longer because there's not as much flow through those. Uh, uh, this one stays in the pipe uh, less time because there's more flow through the, uh, through the uh, parallel valves. This one is losing 26 joules per tick. And this one's 25 joules per tick. Hmm. Let's try doubling the, um, the, the, the radiator capacity. So we'll turn these off and we'll open up these doors to try to equalize the temperature again. 
and I will expand the condenser coils uh, to see if that will um, give a more predictable result. So now we're starting to test anew, and we started off with the same uh, temperature and the same pressure. I pumped up the pressure and both of the um, cells and both of the experiments to about the same amount, a couple of kilopascals, uh, yeah, a couple of kilopascals over uh, ambient, and then let them sort of relax back down. Now I can already see the one on the right is pulling ahead a bit and I think that has to do entirely on flow rate. Because these ACs, these portable ACs, keep the same pressure in the waste pipe or it might keep the same number of moles, I'm not sure, one or the, one or the other, then the flow rate at the, at the end of the pipe will be substantially different. You won't actually get a pressure buildup in the in the uh, in the condenser part of it. It will actually just be the same, and you'll get the same thermal reduction. I guess I could say it'll be driving off the same amount of uh, same amount of heat. So that's an interesting but expected result. And the reason that we expect the system to behave this way, we'll turn it off, make sure both of these are off, and off. And that one is off. Okay, now the reason that we expect this, let's take it over here through this sandstorm is because the amount of mass in these pipes will be constant. Now we can see the pressure and the temperature going up but the moles are staying the same. So we have 17 moles of volatile. Let's just go with the volatile. And we have about 16 here. And 6 and 8 of the other two and eight and nine so it's it's about it's about even there's, there's a little bit more in one than the other but the uh the capacity of both of these is the same so if we are allowing a higher flow rate sorry in this one because this one was the double um the double valve then there will be a higher rate of uh, a higher mass going into the, the waste pipe over here, higher amount of mass going into this waste pipe. When this one slowed down, again, we have uh, a lower mass going into this waste pipe from over here. The cooling capacity isn't changed because this unit um, isn't dumping, it's, it's dumping the heat here, but it's actually circulating within itself. It's pulling in gas within this cell and then spitting it out, and then pulling it in, then spitting it out, and pulling it in, and spitting it out. There's no circulation here. There's no um, constant dumping of hot mass in there. It's just dumping energy into these pipes. So once your cooling capacity on both of the condensers is the same, you will have the same rate of cooling in the um, uh, in both the experiments. Now, if we then look here, we don't have we don't really have enough cooling capacity to support these two um, uh, these two coolers as they stand right now because uh, 
we don't have enough uh, radiators to, to pull it off. Now, originally I thought that these things uh, worked like the... Um, uh, worked like the standard ACs that they would uh, they would just keep dumping the uh, they would keep dumping mass into the waste pipe until it was equalized. But even that doesn't dump it forever. If it's a if it's a, a closed pipe, it won't it won't dump forever. Which is not really how this is supposed to work. How cooling works in this game is more like a piezoelectric effect than a heat pump. So it's more like a Pelche than an air conditioner. So in the black box, you will have a theoretical two sides. One side will be the hot side and the other side will be the, co the cold side. And that's basically all that's happening. In the standard uh, AC units for the game, again, you'll still have a hot side and a cold side, but um, the cold, the, the, the cold side or the, the input output side runs in a loop. It doesn't really need to. That's why you can, you can loop it back on itself and then send the pipe anywhere you want and you don't have to have a push and pull. It's just, um, it's just this thing, a piezoelectric thing with a pump inside. That's, that's all it is. Now, the reason that this side heated up faster with the scrubber in in there is because we were actually moving more mass or uh, we weren't moving more mass but it was it was a, a, a slower um, a slower of trickle mass into the cell into the into the experiment so this had a higher pressure which meant it was able to absorb more heat than this side. Now, if we, again, increase the radiator size to infinity um, so that whatever the leak rate is on either of the, um, the valve assemblies was the same as the amount of um, mass that, the, that the, uh, the scrubbers were taking in, then they would, they would equal again. It's just that the mass spent more time in the pipe when it was just the air scrubber. Now the mass doesn't spend more time in the pipe because it's still moving. The mass is still moving in these two, um, uh, in these two experiments, but they're limited. They're limited to however much these ACs dump into them. They dump the same amount. Both sides dump the same amount of thermal energy into into the pipe. But both sides will also uh, eventually dump the same amount of uh, mass to energy ratio simply because this how this works. So uh, when when heat gets dumped in over on that side, uh, because that's where the end of the loop is, then this side will feel a little warmer and attempt to cool it down because again, I think these are all fractional. But you cannot tune this um, this setup any higher than it is, except to massively increase your um, your radiator network. And right now, it's starting to go down again because the sun's going down. And uh, when we look, this should be the same amount of of heat. Yeah, it's still pretty pretty similar, about one. 0.1.2 of a difference and you might be able to get up to a, a, a few more percentage points off over a long period of time because um, well no you would no because because right now they're the exact same, same setup so it would have the uh, exact same cooling effect but the capacity of how much you can cool a room is in the the two portable ACs you can't really tune it beyond that because you just can't. Now you might be able to uh, force it to steal more gas from the room by using a pump on the outlet side of the waste uh, pipe, but I think in the end you'll have this the same problem. Um, 
it might work better if you were driving off heat during the night because it was cooler and then letting more in at the night at night and then stopping during the daytime but uh, the bottleneck uh, is the ACs and and that's why um, fractionalizing how much flow goes through everything is just not going to work because it's a Pelche it's not a heat pump Oh yeah, and uh, goodbye once again.